Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be waxing my snowboard, prepping the edges, getting it ready, We're going on a snowboard trip, leaving for Beaver Creek in two days. Pretty excited because they have a nice storm going through. It's currently January 12th, 2023. I think they're supposed to get 12 inches in a couple days, so I'm pretty excited about that. That's right when we'll be there. So you basically get your board. I had it stored all winter or all summer. Um, before you store a board, it's a good idea to loosen up your binding. So I loosened up these screws. That way those bindings aren't pulling on the board all summer on the base. That's also good for when you first wax it because you want to loosen up the bindings. That way you're not putting too much heat on those screws. So we got the board here all nice um, set up. I have, you're going to want to get some of these clamps here that you can rip the board on. Lots of different companies make them, but it makes it a lot easier to get this waxed. Um, I just finished up sharpening up my edges. I did a little video on how to do that. But basically it involves getting a diamond stone and just running it along your edges and getting all the burrs off. And then you want to clean up those edges, get all the shavings off of your board so that it doesn't, you don't end up pressing metal into your base, which can damage it. And most boards are set, you basically, you want to have your edge set and you want to know what it is. That way you can just sharpen it. You don't have to completely reset your board. Um, never summer boards, from what I can tell online, come with a 90 degree side edge and a zero degree base edge. So I just set my tool to that. Um, this one doesn't go to zero degrees, so I had to, can't use the tool for that. Um, and I have at one point reset my edges to 89 degrees. So I put the, basically a diamond stone like this and some water. I put it in here, sharpen up the edges. And if you want to see more, I'll put a link to that video below. Uh, but essentially it involves just running it along the edges getting them nice and sharpened up and then running it along the base. For the base edge, I just use my fingers as a guide just to keep it clean. And you can tell by looking at your edges and by doing the fingernail test, if it takes off a little bit of your fingernail, then it's sharp enough. If it doesn't, then you're going to want to sharpen it up. You can also use a gummy stone. I didn't go over that in, this, in the previous video um, to get kind of rid of any little scratches. Or if you see, this really helps sharpen up your edges or polish up your edges, especially if there's rust. And so before I wax it, I go over it with the diamond stone, especially the base edge, just to get rid of any burrs that may not have come out previously. Like I see a burr here, which I was just able to knock out real quick with this gummy stone, get it polished up. Here's another one. And you want this edge nice and soft, nice and smooth. That way you're not scratching up your iron, but scratches in your iron then you can scratch up your base when you're ironing on it. So there's a few burrs there that I didn't get on my first run with the diamond stone. Here's another one here. You just smooth those out. Or if you see a rust spot, gummy stones are great at getting the rust out. And there's some burrs up here. Otherwise, these are nice smooth edges. I'm gonna do the sides a little bit as well. And you're just feeling for any rough spots now. And polishing up those edges nicely. And there you go. Gummy, good use of the gummy stone. So the next part, we're gonna clean it up with some rubbing alcohol. Basically you wanna clean the base. So we put a little bit of rubbing alcohol here. There is base cleaner that you can get, but I usually just use some rubbing alcohol. I don't like to be too aggressive in removing wax from the base. Put a little bit more rubbing alcohol on here, cleaning the base up. Just seeing, make sure we got everything off, making sure the edges, got all the metal filings off. I'm not picking much up on my paper towel. I'm gonna switch to a new paper towel just to make sure I get as much dirt off as I can. So we have nice clean base here. And then you go along, now it's time to plug in our iron. What we're gonna do, is take some wax here. We're going to use this uh, 
couple of waxes here. They're basically are by temperatures. This one's negative 12 to 36 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what it'll most likely be when we're out there. This one's a much colder negative four to negative 14, which I don't think it'll be that cold when they're out there. So you, you can look at kind of the waxes by temperature and basically what they self-describe themselves to do. Or you're waiting on that. This is my iron. Basically it's a basic race wax iron kit. This is my, I just bought the generic kit online, the racewax.com kit. It came with pretty much everything you're gonna see in this video. Um, it didn't come with this Swix guide. I had to buy that separately. Um, I'll, I'll shout out a few things. It came with a sharpener, but it didn't come with, I have an extra one. And then I also have this uh, sc scraper sharpener. Um, that I bought separately. Those are kind of the main deviations. Uh, so let me get our iron plugged in. And turned on here. Then we'll start letting that heat up. So I set my iron here to 130, and then I didn't really check my wax. So let's see how our wax looks here. So you want your wax to drip, but not smoke. That's good. You got a nice drip, drip here. Uh, and I, some people you can drip it on. Um, I prefer basically to heat it up and then to rub it on, kind of like chalk. So heat it on, rub it on. Heat it, and then rub it on there. We're getting a lot of wax dripping here. I find this way. I don't end up with an excessive amount of wax on the board. Whereas if I drip it, I usually end up getting a little bit too much. I just keep heating it and adding it on here. You don't need to cover the whole board or not every, every speck of the board just because you're gonna, again, run your iron over it here. And that'll give you a nice even distribution of wax. But again, I think the first time I did this, I put way too much wax on the board, and then the more wax you put on, the longer you have to spend scraping. So keep that in mind. Also, a good idea to protect your bindings. As you can see, mine are kind of on the side here. They're getting some wax on them. So what you can do is get some painter's tape. fresh roll here. Let me see if I can get it open. And then you basically just put this over your bindings, that stick, the parts that stick out, so that way you're good to go. There we go. Side as well that keeps the wax from running underneath your bindings and ruining them. Again, this is a, it's easy to forget because I just basically forgot. I have a little bit of wax on bindings there. It only takes two seconds just to get that on there. Put it on the edge, keeps them from wax from running underneath. Or inside there. And then we can get back to business. Again, we're just 
just warming up this wax and rubbing it on the board. I will admit it is kind of hard to get it uniformly on there. Usually I do drip it on, but I saw a video where they recommended this method. And I said that uh, does make a lot of sense because it looks like you can use a lot less wax this way. And I would say so far it does appear that I am using less wax. Let me readjust my cord here. There we go. Also good idea to watch your feet while you do this. Because it's easy to get wax on your feet if you're not careful. I like to just wax just past my contact point that way all the snow hitting that contact point runs smoothly away from the snowboard nice and fast no need to necessarily run up all the way to the tip other than putting a little bit of wax on it does give it some protection for rockets and whatnot so now i'll just kind of shake off all this excess any excess wax that's on there and now basically what we're going to do put our iron straight on the board and just get a nice little sheen And this is kind of where it starts to make a little bit more sense when you're waxing it because you get this nice kind of mirror-like finish on your board. It looks really good. And as the wax dries, then it kind of goes away. And then you get to scrape it all off here in a minute. But again, just waxing up here. I like to, I do like to do the ends of the board just because a little bit of wax, I think, in the pores there protects it when you hit rocks and things like that. As a very average snowboarder, that is something that I do. Basically, I like to run over each section about four times. And at this point, some people say you go tip to tail, which I'm basically going tip to tail. But in reality, it doesn't really matter until you're adding structure with your brushes at the end. That's what a lot of people say. So again, just getting a bunch of wax into these pores now. I would say even with the new technique that I did here, putting the rubbing the wax on, I may still have ended up with too much wax, but I imagine that comes with time. And this is where you really need to watch your feet. Just the wax does drip off the side here. Again, just making sure I like to hold my iron just like this. And the bigger kind of gobs of wax that form up, I just push those down further down the board, making sure we got everything covered. Again, watch your feet here. Don't be a hero, wear some shoes. Just getting all this wax pushed around on the board, getting a nice uniform finish. And then once we're done here, we're gonna scrape all this wax off. So we just want wax in the pores. That's why you don't really need a ton of wax on your board in this step. But again, easy to overdo it. And if you overdid it, it's your first time doing it, you probably will overdo it. And I'll go ahead and just speed you guys up a little bit here until we're ready to scrape. And I'll just put on a little bit of music for you guys. Or fast forward through this part, we'll see.
All right, guys, let's take a closer look at this board. So I'm gonna let this wax cool down, but this is basically the finish you're looking for, you know, right here, that's where I just kind of finished up. Um, and you just kind of have a nice uniform amount of wax on there as best you can. Yeah, we're gonna let this cool down for five to 10 minutes and then we're gonna start scraping. All right, guys, it's been about 20 minutes or so. We are now ready to scrape. You're gonna probably want a big and small scraper like I have here. Then also, it's not a bad idea to make sure your scrapers are sharpened. So get one of these. Dull scraper doesn't really work very well. It's pretty annoying. And this sharpens up the edge nicely. Same thing with my small scraper. Nice sharp edge on there. Then when it starts, you know, tip to tail, sort of scraping longer passes. Get lots of wax off here. And again, make sure you have a trash can on pretty much on both sides. It's a bad idea. So you're gonna get a little bit of a mess here. Get all this wax off. real thin layer of wax on there that's basically just in the pores of the board. This is where you'll start kind of getting upset with yourself that you took so much wax on. But again, you know, most of us only do this a few times a year. So don't beat yourself up too badly. Really get in there, a bigger scraper. And so you basically aren't getting any more wax off anymore and then I switch to the smaller scraper. That one, we'll just be a little bit more precise with it.
All right, so I got most of the wax off. I usually like to do kind of one more pass once I feel pretty good about it, where I sharpen up my scraper, my big scraper. And again, kind of just go in sections, making sure I got as much off as I possibly can. I just go one final pass. Big scraper, nice fresh, freshly sharpened big scraper here. Again, at the end here, finding a spot that I missed. The same thing, my small scraper, freshly sharpen it. I need one final pass here. Right now I'm picking up mainly a lot of just debris wax that's already been scraped. Now I feel pretty good about it. It's almost time here to move on to our brushes. So I have three different brushes. I've got a more, got on the, uh, by my brush card here, which kind of tells me more about my brushes. Um, but I have the brass brush, which again, is pretty aggressive and you don't want to press it too hard into your board because you can damage the base. Uh, but it's reasonable to just do some nice, Kind of even pressured strokes, tip to tail. We're starting to give our board some structure now. So kind of the direction we go matters. So we're going to tip the tail. Giving lots of nice structure to the board here. Removing a lot of the excess wax that was on there. One more pass here. Even here. Gives you a good idea of how much wax is left. There still is a good, nice little bit coming up here. Then I switched to a nylon brush. So now we're very much in the safe zone. You can apply a good amount of pressure with a nylon brush. We're just giving this thing lots of structure, giving a nice polished base look here. I want to have a nice kind of mirror pretty looking base. This is a good time to spend a little bit of extra time on your board, seeing if you can kind of brush as much of this fine wax off the board as you can. It's a little bit harder with these, with this nylon brush, because of how stiff the bristles are. So that's why we're going to switch to a horsehair brush here in a minute. But again, especially at the end here where I was wiping most of my wax, there's a good amount of just a little bit of wax left on the end. So there was our nylon brush. And now we switch to a horsehair brush, which this is very fine. It's basically just like you're able to sweep up all the little bit of wax that's sitting on top of your board. And give it lots of structure, but this will be able to get a nice shiny base. And then we'll go to our final step, which I like to run. It's called corking your board. Not everybody does in every video, um, but this waxing video was kind of a combination. Several different videos I saw online. So let me know what you agree with, what you disagree with. Maybe I did this completely wrong. And if I did, I'd like to know. So go ahead and tell me in the comments.
comment. But I appreciate you guys watching. Excited to get out this weekend to Beaver Creek. Let me know in the comments if you've ever been there. I'll let you guys know how it goes. I'll have a, video, a Beaver Creek video on my channel. Hopefully several. So if you want to check those out, make sure to subscribe. But I love this kind of final part here with the horse hair brush. It's very satisfying because you can really apply a lot of pressure. Get all the wax. Now if you're bored here, all the little stuff that's been sitting on top or just in the pores there. It just feels satisfying to get all that off there. Again, waxing can be pretty enjoyable. I think it's a little bit scary the first time you do it. It just feels like you're ruining your board. But again, it's not a whole lot you can do to your board other than put a big gouge in the base. Which again, if you watch any number of videos, taking any advice at all, should be good. So I'll keep doing this horsehair brush until I'm getting like absolutely no wax coming off this board here. I'll kind of show you what I'm getting here. Bring it a little closer. You can see here, I'm still getting a fine little line that I have to keep pushing off. So I'm gonna keep going until I get that fine little line off. I don't have to worry about it anymore. And then I'll show you guys how the cork board, what that entails. But I think we're almost done here. Again, you can always go back and repeat steps like if you're just getting a ton of wax still you can go back and scrape some more and then repeat the brushes just getting little bits of wax still coming out i think a lot of it kind of hard to scrape front and back and forth. I think a lot of wax comes from there in this part. It's not a bad idea to just kind of shake out your brush too. Good here getting all the wax off. Pretty satisfied. Might do one more run with my nylon brush. Just to make sure. Getting all the structure. Let me find a spot where hey, there's a little bit more wax there than I thought. Kind of like I'm doing right here on the side part. Switch back to my horsehair. structure put in and all right now the moment you've all been waiting for get the cork our board so basically with the cork you're just running it over the board you basically just warm up the wax a little bit so that it just kind of it gets absorbed into the board that much more it spreads out that much more evenly you can apply a good amount of pressure here Again, you're just heating this wax up, spreading it over any parts that might not have gotten all the way filled in. This nice little thin membrane here of 
wax that you've now covered your board with. And we're almost done here. It's kind of an optional step, but if you want your board to be that much quicker, it saves you from slowing down on the flats at least one time on your trip. This little extra part, more than worth it. Just getting our heated up here. Again, we'll start. Kind of go tip to tail one more time with the cork. Just to make sure we're structure it stays intact and we're getting a nice shiny board no excess wax on it just a little bit of pressure and extra heat we're applying here makes all the difference that's it I also like to usually just Go over the edges one more time with the gummy stone. Make sure there's no wax on them. Got it all scraped off. Looks good there. If there is any wax on your edges, it'll immediately get scraped off on your first couple turns. We'll take our tape off here. Remember to tighten up your bindings as you loosened them up. And I'll show you guys the finished product. Again, thanks for watching, guys. I'll let you know how the trip goes. Kind of see a nice shiny finish here. Nothing too crazy. Thanks for watching, guys. If you got any questions, put them in the comments below. I know this was a longer video, but I hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all next time.